All right, in this video, what I'd like to do is uh, show you how to do project number 19 on the CMM. It's this right here. And you'll also get a print that looks like that with this. And what you'll be measuring, actually, is this part right here. Okay, so we're going to set this part up. We want to find out where the origin's at. It looks like it is at the, uh, we'll go off this corner right here, take all our measurements off this front corner. So what we'll do, we'll set this part in the CMM, and we just need three pegs. So we'll set our part in just like that, and then we take a little piece of putty, and we just stick on the end, and that just keeps it from moving on us. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to boot up our computer. If we can find out how to boot up the computer. And we'll be taking it home, right? And as soon as she boots up, we'll calibrate our probe. We'll go ahead and do a part coordinate system on this part. And we'll measure a few items just to get you started on measuring project number 19. OK, looks like we're just about ready. You can see right there is a GeoMAT icon right here. And so we just double click on this right there. Sounds like a printer's trying to print something out for me. Okay, first thing that again it's going to ask is that I home the machine. When I home the machine, I go all the way forward, to the right, and to the top. So once I get it there, forward, right, and top, I'm going to click home. And then I'm going to put project number 19 up on the top line, part name. I'm just going to put uh, test plate. Um, I can do that. And I'll put my name, Bob Smith, here. And it already comes up with the date and the time. If I want to put any notes, I can put them in right here. Uh, once I get this going, I'll just hit accept, and I'm good to go. But I do want to go ahead and calibrate my probe again. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to hit next again. I'm going to take five hits off of this ball here that's on the plate. You take one hit off the top, and I'll try to get out of the way as much as I can. We'll take one hit off the top. Four hits around the equator. And just take them nice and easy. My left arm, my left hand is holding the left vertical arm on the y-axis, and my right hand is holding the probe. That way I have more control. Left hand here, right hand here. Okay. Now it says it came out to 117 thousandths and nine tenths. That looks pretty good. I highlight it and then I hit set active. So now in my report I've got project 19 test plate, Bob Smith. I've got the date, time, Hellmel, gauge, and my stylus or probe is 117 thousandths and nine tenths. So now I'm ready to do a part coordinate system. Because, like I said in the other videos, the machine knows where it's at and knows where uh, it sets, but it doesn't know where my part is in relation to X, Y, Z. So what I want to do is a, a part coordinate system now. So what we're going to do, we're going to touch on top of the part four times. So we're going to hit measure, plane, shortcut B. I want to hit Z negative. Negative Z, I want to come down on top of it. Now I could hit the top of the table, but I like to go off my part. Okay, so I'm going to hit four points, and I hope you can see this okay. You may not be able to, I don't know. But I'm just going to tap four points right on top of my part, and it's going to give me a plane. And there you see on the screen, I now have my plane. Now when I hit J and L, all of the Z goes away because now it knows where the top of my workpiece is at. Okay? J and L is orient and origin. Okay? Now what we want to do, we want to measure a line on the left side of the part, or shortcut M, and it's going to be X positive because I'm going to be hitting it from this side. So I'm going to take two hits on the left side of the part, one there, 
on there. And they don't have to be spaced quite as far, but I think the farther the better. Okay, now at this point I need to tell it what plane I'm working on. And as I'm looking down at the part, I see an X and a Y. So I'm working on the XY plane because I'm looking down at my part. Now it would be different if I were working on the side of the part with the probe going in this way, or on the other side of the part, or on the back of the part, or the face of the part, it would be different. But since I'm looking down on the part, what I see when I'm looking down is X and Y. Now I want to hit the line in origin, K and L. And you see that my X goes away, X origin is set. So the next thing I want to do is hit a point on the front and that is going to be Y positive because I'm coming in from the front. And I do want to hit on this bottom step. One point. Right on the bottom step, right here. Okay? It's very important. Now all I'm going to do is hit L as origin. And now you can see on the screen that I have my X, Y, and Z set. Red is X, green is Y. Blue is Z. So they're all set. And you can actually see the point where I hit, the line that I made, and the plane that I made. So once I did this, now I'm ready to start measuring features. And a feature is anything on the part, such as a slot, a hole, a groove, anything like that would be a feature. And I think I'm going to put a little more ball plate on it since I just moved it. But it's back in position against the pins. As long as I stay against the pins, I'm okay. It'll always locate in the same spot. Okay, so now we want to measure maybe the hole in the middle. And since I have a print, I know where that hole is supposed to be. That hole should be 4.450 from my origin on the Y because my part's sitting in there like that. And on the X, it looks like it's going to be... Um, I have to do a little math on this one here. No, it should be... 2 inches, uh, 3.950 minus 2 inches would be 1.950 from the left side. And that's the way we're looking at our part. From here to here, it would be 1.950 from this front. On the Y dimension, we're going to be 4.450. Okay, now I'll use that in just a minute, not yet. But what I want to do is measure a hole. I'm going to go to measure a circle or shortcut Z and measure the inside diameter. And I'm going to hit it four points inside the minor hole. There are actually two holes as a counterboard. So I'm going to tap it a quarter way around each time. And I'm probably right in your way where you can't see a thing. Now when it does this, it means that something came out of whack just a little bit. Maybe I hit a little bit too hard. But I'm going to go ahead and hit accept the measurement. So there's the measurement that I got. My locations. So, But I want to change this and add some nominals to it. So I'm going to highlight it, right click, and say edit tolerance. Because the hole is supposed to be 2.0. Tap it around. The X dimension is 1.950. And the Y dimension is 4.450. And when I hit apply, OK, there it puts everything down. It says everything is within tolerance, within 5,000. So it looks like we're pretty good. Uh, we were about 1,000 and 7 tenths off on the, on the Y, uh, 4 tenths off on the X. The hoe was 2,000 and 1 tenth off. But you notice on the screen, you can see, you can actually see what we're doing. There's the circle that we just measured. Now we're going to measure the bigger circle, and the location should be the same. Only thing different is the size of the circle. Okay. So we're going to go to measure circle, shortcut Z. We're going to hit on ID, inside diameter. So we're going to measure this larger circle in the middle. One, two, three. And that first hit was pretty hard, so I don't know how it's going to hit uh, these others. It looks okay. Okay, there's the four hits. And it looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our dimensions in. Oops, let me highlight this. And we'll go to edit tolerance and we want to put 2.500 in that first block. 1.950 in the second block. Third block is 4.450. Just like the last one. 
hit apply, okay, and there are my numbers. Now what I could do and what would probably be a good idea is to uh, change what this is, is called, okay. So I may call it something. I can enter a name for this. I can say the small hole in the center counterboard. If I can type this. Small hole in the center counterboard. And when I hit that, okay, now you notice that first hole that I measured, now it says small hole in the center counterboard. That way I know what's what, because when I print out the report, some of these, I'm not going to know where they're located at. So it's a good idea to describe what hole or a slot or a cone that I may be measuring. The second one, I'm going to go to feature properties and call that one uh, large hole. Large and center counterboard. It's a little hard to type on this because you've got green, yellow, orange, and blue letters on top, and it's a little, a little odd. Okay, large hole in center counterboard. Hit okay, and there we just changed it. So now let's go ahead and measure. Uh, let's measure one up front, with one of the front holes. Measure one of the front hose. Or we could measure the cone, or I don't know. Yeah, we'll measure one of the front hose. There's a circle, inside diameter. Now we're going to measure this front hole here. And I'm going to take four hits. One, two, three, four. Okay, that just got the front hole right here. You see that we have that right there. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but it's there. And there it is. Now, I do need to know where it's located at. If I look at my drawing, I can see that it should be one inch from the origin on the X and one inch from the Y. And this hole is actually off quite a bit on purpose. So let's go in and change when we go to edit tolerance, we're going to actually change the nominals to one inch is the hole size, one inch X, one inch Y, and we'll hit apply, OK. And now we see that we're 70 thousandths off on the X, so that's not good if we were measuring a real part. So let's go ahead and tell what we're doing. So it's going to be the front left hole. So I like to describe these so that whoever looks at the report, they'll know exactly what I measured. So if I put in front, left, hole, and hit OK, then I see on my report, it says front, left, hole, four points. It gives me all of my location, the hole size. Everything is plus or minus five. I could change that if I needed to close in the tolerance to plus or minus two or three. But I'll just leave it at plus or minus five. Okay, now we probably want to get the thickness of the part and maybe the width of the part, the length of the part. All we have to do on that is construct another line or measure another line. We can go to measure. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. Line right here on the right side. Okay, now what we're going to do is bring the probe down and touch on the right side of the part. And then we can get our width of the part just like this. And you see that we got a point. Okay. And it looks like we're going to be needing one more point. Because we're measuring line. There we go. Now it wants to know what plane we're at. We're in X and Y. There we go. A 2D XY lab. It gives me my width and it looks like 3.9499. And if I look at the width of the part, it should be 3.950. So we're off about one-tenth of a thousandth on the width. So that's pretty, that's pretty accurate right there. Okay, so let's go to edit tolerance. And on the X, we want 3, I'm sorry, we want 3.950. And we're not going to put anything here because basically what that's looking at 
it says AX slash Y. It's looking at the angle. It should be 90 degrees from the uh, face of the part. So I could put in 90 here if I wanted to. And we'll see what happens when we hit apply. OK. And it looks like, wow, we're within one tenth of a thousandth on the width of the part. So that worked real well. Now, the machine knows what side I'm hitting on. You can see it and you can hear it. But if I hit on this side and the probe goes that way, it knows to take half of the probe compensated off of the measurement. So it knows how to do that. So we don't have to worry about compensating for anything. So let's change the name of this to width of part. Okay, we've got the width of the part, apply, okay, and there we go, width of the part, here's point, x is 3.4999, uh, should be 3.950, we're within one tenth of a thousand, so that looks very, very good. Now we can get the length of the part, we can either, either do it with one point or a line. So we, it just depends on how we want to do it. If, we, we, if we're concerned about parallelism, we'll do two lines. If we're concerned about just getting a distance, we can just hit one point. So we're going to measure, uh, let's just do one point on the back side of the part. So I want actually Y negative. I'm going to hit one point on the back of the part, down at the bottom. Okay. Now we got the Y point right here and it says 9.001. The part should be nine inches long. So we're about one thousandth and one tenth off. So that's how we can either measure a width or a length, a distance, either by a line or a point. It really depends if we're concerned about parallelism or we just want to point to a point. So on this one here, we'll go ahead and edit this one to edit tolerance. And we're going to put nine point O in here. We'll hit apply, OK. And it says it's off one thousandths and one tenth. We'll go ahead and change the name to um, length of part. Okay. Length of the part. Okay, now we've got that there. So you see that we're adding these things up. Now, if we want to get the thickness of the part, all we have to do is touch the plate one time, and we'll see the distance between the plate and the top of the part because our, our plane zero is on the top of the part. So let's go ahead and just measure a point right here on top of the part. We want Z negative. Um, actually, we're going to take the point off the plate next to it, and we're going to get the distance from the plate to the part. And it says it's 0.9534. Now, I don't have a negative side because zero is at the top of the part, and I'm going down. Anytime we're going down, it's a negative number. Okay, so let's go in here and edit this, and let's see what it's supposed to be. Should be 950, we're 953 and 4 tenths. We're off about 3 thousandths and 4 tenths. So we're going to go in here, edit tolerance, and we're going to put in 0.950. And since it's just a point, that's all I need to do. We're off 3 thousandths and 4 tenths. I want to change the name. So I go to feature properties, and I'm going to say thickness of part. Thickness of part, here we go, apply, okay. And we see that the thickness of the part is 0.953 and 4 tenths, it should be 950. We're about 3,004 tenths off, but we do have a label on it now that says the thickness of the part. So as we measure different features on here, we're just adding all of this into the report and we'll print out the complete report. When we're done, we'll staple it to the back of our um, quiz or the lab uh, handout. We'll take this sheet, it'll be attached to this sheet. We'll print out a report when we're done. It'll show all of this and we'll attach it to the back and that's what we'll turn in. And a project like this, since there's so many in the class, uh, we, we can do it in, in pairs or in groups um, and it should be no problem. Okay. So if you have questions, hunt me down. I'll be out in the shop somewhere if I'm not in, in the lab. Um, and ask what you need to ask. Thank you very much.